wait for the others to join. I take this chance to welcome everyone who is joining. Uh, we will give a couple of minutes for people who are joining before we get started. So, but thank you those who have kept time. Thank you very much for joining. You are most welcome for this conversation that we shall be having today. Our topic, as you can see, is postgraduate education to consolidate your knowledge and professional skills for leadership in the 21st century. Uh, so uh, I, I will continue to welcome those who are joining and I will continue to uh, recognize those uh, who have joined as we go along. The topic is postgraduate education to consolidate your knowledge and professional skills for leadership in the 21st century. The key words in this topic include postgraduate education, um, leadership, and 21st century. How are these things interconnected? So, um, how is postgraduate education connected to leadership? And how is it connected to the 21st century? And how does it contribute to consolidating your knowledge and professional skills? So as we, as we get prepare to get started, um, I would invite you to keep reflecting on the role of postgraduate education in consolidating your knowledge and professional skills. And once you have successfully completed your postgraduate education, uh, inevitably you become a leader. Um, in our postgraduate school, we offer a range of degree programs and also postgraduate diploma programs. Um, all this will make you an expert in a, in a given field. So um, your expertise in a given field, in a chosen field, um, will be strengthened. And as a result, you will be um, definitely uh, an expert of sorts in the field. That's why we relate that to leadership. Um, all right, I think we have um, a number of people. Let me recognize 
uh, Mr. Bernard Ochan, uh, who has joined the call. Let me recognize Mr. Gale Mule. Uh, let me also recognize somebody who joined with the Lenovo computer. Uh, I don't know who it is, but you're most welcome. Um, Okay, uh, I will just, I'll give two more minutes only, and then I will get started formally. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, let's reflect on this topic of today's conversation. And I would like uh, members to coming your viewpoints, your perspectives on this particular topic uh, towards uh, rather at the end of my presentation. Okay, so um, I think we should be getting started. Uh, on our agenda, we have opening prayer and welcome. We have the vision and mission of Cavendish University, Uganda. We have the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research. We have Uh, the strategic goals of the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research. We have uh, postgraduate programs offered by, the Cavendish, by Cavendish University Uganda in the SPGSR. We have uh, postgraduate education for leadership in the 21st century. And then we also have the SPGSR as a partner in transforming learners into ethical leaders, not easily replaced by robots. I think that should be something exciting to look at. And after that, we shall conclude um, our conversation. Uh, so uh, may I request my good friend, Elizabeth Namakula, to give us an opening prayer so that we get started. Elizabeth, you're welcome. Professor, was that me? Uh, I, I, I requested, uh, Madam Elizabeth Namakula to give us a word of prayer so that we get started. Thank you, Professor. Kindly confirm that I am audible. Yes, you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, friends, I request that we humble ourselves for a word of prayer. Lord God Almighty, we thank you, we bless you. We give you praise for a gift of a new day and for the precious gift of Cavendish University, Uganda, School of Postgraduate Research and Higher Degrees. For the deliberations we are going to have today, we bless you, O oh God. Grant us the gifts of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to enjoy the fruitful deliberations of the day. In the name of God, I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you very much, uh, Elizabeth Namakula, for the wonderful prayer. And uh, so I wish to take this chance now to welcome each and everybody 
I recognize all of you in, the, in your various capacities. Uh, you are most warmly welcome to our conversation of today. I am Professor Alex Thomas Ijo, the director of the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research. I also double up as the editor in chief of one of our journals, the Cavendish Journal of Social Sciences and Management, uh, which we recently launched. Now, um, let us move straight to remind ourselves of the, the mission and vision and the core values of Cavendish University, Uganda. Uh, I wish to uh, recognize the leadership at Cavendish University and also uh, the excellent mission and vision Uh, today we shall be talking about uh, the postgraduate school mostly, but what we are doing in graduate school uh, dovetails with what's happening uh, in, in the university as a whole, uh, as containing the framework of our vision and mission. Now, our, our vision, which is the ideal uh, we aspire towards is the, is, is the center to become a center of excellence, innovation, and transformation. And the things that we do to move us towards that vision, which is our mission, is to transform and inspire students to reach their full potential in employment, entrepreneurship, and ethical leadership. Now, to achieve this uh, vision and to, to oil the activities and to make them run smoothly, we also have our core values. And these are excellence, integrity, responsibility, respect, and innovation. Uh, now, uh, let me introduce the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research. Uh, the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research is one of the academic units of Cavendish University, Uganda. Uh, the, the SPGSR, for short, was founded in 2011 to coordinate postgraduate academic programs offered in the four faculties of Cavendish University, Uganda. The SPGSR also houses the Directorate of Research for Cavendish University, Uganda. Now, the vision of the SPGSR is to become a center of academic and professional excellence and of innovative research by advancing and applying the fundamental scientific skills and knowledge in different areas of study and research within the academia, in private sector, businesses, and in government. Uh, I believe this is uh, quite clear and self-explanatory. Uh, the mission that we espouse in order to achieve this vision is to coordinate, monitor, and provide an enabling environment for quality graduate training, innovative research, the dissemination of research output, and the development of an all-round graduate equipped with the necessary theoretical knowledge and critical analytical skills to do independent research and solve practical 
social, economic, and technological problems. Uh, I hope you can see the interconnection between the vision and mission of the university and that of the SPGSR, which is uh, the academic unit that coordinates postgraduate uh, training. Now, uh, the programs that are offered in the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research include the following. Basically, there are seven academic programs offered in the four faculties of Cavendish University, Uganda. There are four faculties in Cavendish University, uh, and there are seven academic programs that are postgraduate. Uh, this, this include, of course, masters and postgraduate diplomas. Now, these are the MBA, Master of Business Administration, and Master of Project Management, which are offered in the Faculty of Business and Management. But we also have Master of Laws offered in the Faculty of Law. We have uh, Masters in Public Health, which is offered in the Faculty of Science and Technology. But we also have Masters of Security Studies and Masters in International Relations and Diplomatic Studies, which are offered in the Faculty of Socioeconomic Sciences. And finally, we also have Master of Education in Educational, Man in educational Management uh, offered in the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research. Okay, so um, let me say something about the Directorate of Research in the SPGSR. Uh, the SPGSR supports research activity across the university. And these include research by postgraduate students of Cavendish University, Uganda, research by the staff of Cavendish University, uh, but also the activities relating to the Cavendish Journal of Social Sciences and Management and the Cavendish University Law Journal. Uh, the SPGSR also uh, hosts research and publication, capacity building through regular seminars and workshops. Uh, the SPGSR also hosts universities, research and consult consultancies with industry. Now, I would like to take you through briefly through the strategic goals of the SPGSR uh, to enable us to uh, understand what the SPGSR is really about and how that will impact you as a student or as a staff uh, at Cavendish University here. Um, so the SPGSR aims to effectively coordinate high quality, blended and safe teaching and learning that inspires and transforms learners to attain their full potential in employment, entrepreneurship, and ethical leadership. So this is one of the key goals of the SPGSR. Uh, then secondly, the SPGSR also supports research, publications, and intellectual engagements, both at the university, but also beyond, so as to inform, inspire, and drive teaching and learning and offer innovative solutions in the marketplace. Now, uh, one very unique characteristic of Cavendish University learning 
Cavendish University uh, teaching and learning programs is that uh, the teaching and learning is student-centered. Uh, this means that students are at the center of the learning and that the staff do their best to support students in their effort to attain their educational and professional objectives. Now, this is particularly true in the postgraduate school because many of our postgraduate students actually come or enroll with their objectives. They are coming to do uh, a postgraduate program because they feel they need it. So they have their personal goals and objectives for enrolling for these courses. Uh, so what we do is to rally around and ensure that they attain these goals. Uh, it could be they are trying to get promotion at work, or they want to sharpen and build their skills in a given area for a career of their interest. So, so most of our postgraduate students come when they have um, a reason to pursue the course they are enrolling for. Now, this may be slightly different from what happens at undergraduate level. At undergraduate level, uh, we have uh, a variety of students who are mostly young and who most often are just uh, in the educational system, not because they have uh, identified an area or a profession for themselves, but usually as a continuation of, um, uh, uh, please excuse me if you could kindly mute. Could you kindly mute? Uh, All right, uh, so, so um, I was giving you a contrast between uh, postgraduate students and the majority of undergraduate students. And I was saying that most undergraduate students are still, uh, they are basically pursuing education as part of um, uh, maybe what their parents have designed. Uh, they, they, they have, in most cases, they haven't really attained that level where they make a conscious choice on their own to follow a certain path of career. Um, so this is um, the, the difference between uh, undergraduate and postgraduate students. So uh, because most postgraduate students have an objective in mind, it becomes easy to uh, center the teaching and learning around their objectives. Uh, I'm moving on with the strategic goals of the SPGSR. Um, and another important one is to encourage the responsiveness of the academia to public policy and industry related challenges through the dissemination of research outputs and policy engagements. This can be through conferences, workshops, policy briefs, newspaper opinion columns, blogs, and social media platforms. Now, I think many of you will agree with me that uh, the academia could do more to influence uh, public policy, to influence 
innovations in industry to influence uh, public management. Uh, we are the repositories of knowledge. We house uh, a lot of very informative research. We have uh, a lot of evidence-based uh, research. However, uh, somehow this, the contribution of the academia to what's happening in the marketplace somehow falls short of what it could be. And so as a key goal of the postgraduate school here at Cavendish University, uh, we endeavor to redress that anomaly by encouraging and supporting and pushing for responsiveness to events taking place in society. Uh, then another important goal, uh, which is the crux of um, what the, po the, the postgraduate school is about now going forward in the 21st century. Uh, and this is to offer knowledge and skills that go beyond those that can be manipulated through artificial intelligence. To turn you, the students, our learners, into leaders that are not easily replaced by robots. Now, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a conference here at Cavendish University uh, talking about chat GTP, chat GTP. Uh, but even before that, we have, uh, we, we have witnessed a lot of uh, artificial intelligence uh, virtually attempting to, 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 to do many of the things that we do. Uh, students are able to Google and put together information very quickly in response to questions. Uh, so research has become quite easy because of the immense amount of information on the World Wide Web. Uh, so now, uh, as we move forward, we realize that uh, a lot of things can be done or can be simulated uh, through artificial intelligence. And so uh, even uh, lecturers could be replaced by robots who will be able to talk and, uh, and uh, articulate issues and lectures. So um, that raises the question of what type of education should we actually be giving or offering to our learners such that what they will be doing, what they will be capable of doing will not be easily replaced or replaceable by robots uh, because as you'll agree with me that if, um, if we are in a situation where uh, all that you are, you are able to do as a graduate, all that you're able to do can be done by machines, can be done by robots, then uh, we face the risk of that replacement and of course, that is likely to lead to massive unemployment uh, in the economy. Uh, those who have the means of production, those who have the capital will replace workers, uh, labor, uh, human, human labor uh, in industry. Now, however, uh, it's, it's not all doom and gloom 
uh, there is, there are still areas, there are still pockets of uh, skills and knowledge that are not easily replaceable by uh, artificial intelligence and IT as we go forward. Now, what are these? And now this, these are the, some of the areas that uh, we, we are actually, uh, we have recognized in Cavendish University and we are attempting to move into some of these areas in order to, to ensure that we have, we produce graduates that are uh, marketable, that are ethical, that are uh, indispensable even in the 21st century. So what are these skills? They include creativity, particularly the ability to create truly original ideas and concepts. Another aspect is emotional intelligence, which is the ability to understand and interpret emotions, which is a key aspect of human interactions and relationships. Now, this emotional intelligence cannot easily be uh, duplicated or copied through in, uh, artificial intelligence because it involves interaction. Uh, so, uh, so, so it can become very complex uh, to model or program using artificial intelligence. Uh, but another area is critical thinking and decision making. Critical thinking and decision making. This refers to the ability to think critically and make complex decisions based on incomplete, often incomplete and uncertain information. Um, so uh, the ability to think critically and to interrogate issues intellectually uh, is not something that can be easily replicated uh, through artificial intelligence. Now, so, so in, in our training, in our teaching and learning at Cavendish University, especially at postgraduate level, we put emphasis on the ability to think critically, to analyze, uh, and to, to apply, or basically operate at the higher level of Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, th this, this become uh, very, very critical in the 21st century because they cannot easily be replicated. Uh, moving on very quickly, uh, another area is complex problem solving. The ability to handle complex, messy, and ill-defined problems that require creativity and insight. Now, there are, human beings deal with uh, a lot of issues that, um, that are not properly defined. It's actually, you, you define it, you, you, you reflect about it, and you, 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 you dissect it as, as, an, uh, as appropriate. Uh, but so, then also, yet another area is the interpersonal skills uh, for human interaction and empathy, uh, the emotional and social connections that are fundamental to human relationships. Now, these are reflected in Cavendish University's core values, okay? Uh, excellence, respect, and so on and so on. Uh, these kind of things are, still remain the preserve of human beings. And if we can equip our students with these particular uh, skills and, and qualities, then we can at least guarantee their relevance in an IT uh, dominated uh, society. Then another one is the psychomotor and physical dexterity and mobility. The ability to perform 
physical tasks that require um, that require fine motor skills and ability, uh, which which we, we try to achieve through co-curricular um, activities at the university here. Um, now, in addition to all that, uh, so so that is what, what characterizes the direction in which we are moving as a school of postgraduate studies and research. We are moving to going beyond what can easily be replicated to, to, to impart uh, skills which are durable and which can uh, stand a chance in uh, an IT dominated uh, future that we are actually entering. Uh, then, uh, but in addition to all this, uh, the SPGSR also facilitates student research, um, uh, supervision, proposal presentations, viva voce examinations. Now, we, we have been doing this uh, both physically, but also through such technologies as Google Meet, Zoom, and others. Now, in the postgraduate school, we are changing with the time. So, indeed, uh, Cavendish University is known for this. Okay, it is uh, embracing technology and moving forward with this. So, in the postgraduate school, we are applying these things. Uh, and this has been quite critical for, for our international students, some of whom uh, do their viva voce when they are in their own countries. So we, we, we make that possible. We make proposal presentations possible online. Uh, and this is very important to our students. Now, um, Cavendish University Management and Collaboration, I think I, 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 I had muted my video, uh, let me. So Cavendish University Management in collaboration with the academic units of the university uh, also introduced the Turnitin software, uh, which is very, very important in assuring quality in research, but also in assessments. Um, so now uh, there are a number of things that we do in the postgraduate school. Um, so in addition, yeah, the, uh, the postgraduate education uh, actually gives you an opportunity to network with people who could be pivotal in your um, future career and influence as a leader. Uh, the SPGSR programs offer you uh, also a sense of personal achievement and an opportunity for personal development, including the cultivation of excellence, integrity, self-reliance, communication skills, and so on, which I have just been talking about. Uh, the programs inspire and transform you into your full potential in employment, entrepreneurship, and ethical leadership. Uh, they also help you develop specialist knowledge and sharpen your research and consultancy skills. Now, the key is having a an edge over your competitors. And so we try as much as possible in the uh, School of Postgraduate Studies to give you that opportunity to network with people, to offer you a sense of uh, personal achievement and develop all these skills, emotional intelligence, soft skills, uh, inspire and transform you into, uh, into your full potential and so on. In other words, your postgraduate education in the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research will turn you into a leader. A leader with the two very strong attributes. One, ethical, because we put emphasis on that in our core values, but also in our training. And two, to have skills and knowledge that will not be easily replaced by robots. And these are the ones I just talked about a short while ago, critical thinking, ability to interrogate issues and innovation. All these are uh, in the core values and vision 
of Cavendish University, Uganda. As I come to conclude, um, I'm saying that all these things will turn you into a leader with the, the two very strong attributes I have mentioned. Uh, what is a leader? You might be asking, what is a leader? Why do I keep talking about leadership? Well, uh, a leader is a person who inspires, motivates, and guides others towards a common vision. Leadership, therefore, is the ability to influence and mobilize a group of people towards a specific goal. And it involves both innate personal traits and learned skills. Now, for those of us who have been talking about who believe and talk about growth mindsets, uh, we, we, we know that uh, leadership can also be trained. So you can have personal attributes, innate abilities that predispose you to be a, a natural leader. But uh, even if you don't, uh, you can uh, cultivate leadership skills and abilities. So leadership is not limited to formal positions of authority, such as managers or executives, but can be demonstrated by anyone at any level of organization. You may not even be a general manager. You may be just uh, an opinion leader <laughs> in, in the society. So, uh, so a leader uh, also is um, uh, basically somebody who influences and motivates and paints a picture of uh, a, a very compelling vision. Uh, so, so now, if, if, if that's what we are going to do uh, to our learners, to mentor them, to, 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 to challenge and inspire them to become uh, leaders themselves, then we ourselves have to be leaders. We have to be leaders. We have to be able to inspire and motivate our students. And so uh, that is what, this is the direction that the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research is moving towards. Um, so uh, ethical leadership and um, and, um, and the skills that are irreplaceable. Now, uh, with that, I wish to conclude by saying that uh, the School of Postgraduate Studies and Research is your partner in developing your professional skills and in developing your ethical uh, standards in such a way as to enable you to nail your educational goals. With that, I would say that success begins at Cavendish. Thank you very much for listening to me. I will be delighted to hear your feedback on these issues, your thoughts. It doesn't have to be a question, it can be a comment, it can be something that tickled you. Please uh, feel free to give me your feedback. Thank you very much. So I think the crux, as, as I wait for members to give me feedback, uh, the crux of this conversation is what kind of education are we providing? Or what kind of education should we provide? 
that will be long lasting, that will make you competitive in the marketplace. In view of the fact that artificial intelligence is doing increasingly very many things. Uh, so what kind of education did you expect? What kind of education uh, did you sign up for? For the students, for, for our students who are on the call, uh, are you aware of the many things that artificial intelligence can now do? Are you worried? What do you have to say to that? Then for the staff, those who work in the academia, uh, what role are you going to play as we move ahead in this 21st century in such a way that what you offer will continue to be relevant? So uh, I welcome your comments, your questions, comments, uh, and observations. So uh, you can also type, you can also type your message your you, you you, you question in the chat room. Yes. Yes, Professor Tuloma. Yeah, thank you very much, Prof, for the very elusive uh, presentation uh, on the subject that is so contemporary that sometimes we feel we feel very insecure afraid and wondering what the future holds but you have actually balanced it that that is the way uh, we are evolving in our mm. in our understanding of our who we are as human beings as creatures with uh, a uh, mindset that evolve and can learn and can be intelligent and can make decisions. And we are seeing now that uh, it appears as if we're going to have com competitors. The, the, the artificial intelligence is going to evolve into something that may replace us or make, make us redundant. But we are forgetting yeah. where we are coming from. Mm. At the beginning of calculators, it, it was like, Calculators will make people to become dumb, not able to do the mathematics and arithmetic. Mm. But today we are living with calculators. And we saw at the time we had computers coming in and becoming a household. And we were afraid mm. that computers would take over. But look at us, we're still working. And so um, as we are seeing these things coming up as ideas in films, movies, we should be you know, adjusting our, the training. We should be evolving the training of our graduates, our primary yeah. school, our, the educational system should be growing along with it. So mm -hmm. that uh, as, as our graduates are coming up, uh, they, are, they are finding their position in a world mm. that is so technological that it can be frightening, like uh, mm. like these um, what do you call them uh, fiction uh, science fiction uh, world. Yes, we are in a science fiction world, but it's no longer fiction; it's reality. Mm -hmm. All right, there are certain fundamental that 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 uh, underpin the development of the mind, and we should. Mm. We should not be more proactive, more intentional in the design of our curriculum, in the implementation of our curriculum, and also in practicalizing the curriculum to, to address the thinking mindset and the doing aspect of our human nature. 
uh, even when we have these artificial intelligence in various forms, even in our handset, they are there. And we are now seeing humanoids coming up. Humanoids are coming up now that are reacting and uh, you know, interfacing with human beings. So I'm not afraid. I'm only, I'm only poised mm -hmm. to give my student what it takes to be able to live in such a world where those, those resources are available yeah. for us to use. They are only resources. They, are, they cannot replace, they cannot replace us. They are only resources for us to uh, do our work more more effectively than ever before. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your oh. presentation. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Professor Tuloma, for those very insightful observations. Uh, yes, the, 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 the fear of replacement, I think, uh, has, been, uh, has been there and continues to be there. Uh, but uh, as you said, these things, they, they normally don't work out in a straight line. Uh, we, we feared uh, replacement of uh, typewriters, uh, replacement of uh, landline phones, and so on. Uh, but uh, of, as you said, calculators, now we have computers which are even more powerful than calculators. So uh, yes, we, we, we will not be replaced. However, we will need, as you say, we will need to change. Even where we are not replaced, we will need to change uh, to be able to be relevant and to be able to have a livelihood. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for that input. Uh, for the, for, I think Professor Atuloma has allayed our fears of being <laughs> replaced. <laughs> <laughs> of, of course, re replaced. Yes, I don't have any fear at all. <laughs> it's just that I have to grow too. I have to evolve. Exactly. Because our, our brains, we are created with brains that can evolve beyond whatever we can think of. We are told yes. that we're not using all the faculties of our brain, ability. Uh, we are the ones creating those uh, resources and those uh, uh, technologies. So... Yeah. They're not going to replace us. We are going to use them as resources to make our work better. Yeah. All right. So if we're yeah. looking at uh, the stairs, using the horse, the donkeys to plow the field situation, I mean, today we cannot plow the field with donkeys. It will not yield anything <laughs> for us. It wouldn't. So let's yeah. see it that way, that yes. all of these these uh, in, uh, technologies that are coming, artificial intelligence, they are all going to be resources for us to advance and explore what abilities we have. Yeah. I can see yeah. the future a good one because in, 19, in 1970s, when the calculators were coming up, <clears throat> it was a mm -hmm. frightening innovation. But yes. those who had technical mind, it was a good, exciting one. For mm. me at the time, I had this technical mind as an electronic enthusiast. I uh, felt that, wow, <clears throat> this is going to save me. You know, before then we were using slide rules. I yeah. mean, nobody <laughs> can think of slide rules today. <laughs> we use slide rules to do yeah. calculation without calculators. Mm -hmm. And we're doing log, log tables, slide rules. There were no calculators. We were yeah. using slide rules to do mathematics. At, those algebra, but today mm. you can't think of slide rule. It's, I mean, you won't survive with slide rule. <laughs> so whatever is coming, we eventually go away and we'll still be there. Mm. We'll still be there. So that all, we said, do, as, yeah. all, all we need to do, as you said, yeah. is to prepare our students to be relevant when exactly. those things begin to come and they will never exactly. take over. Exactly. So I, I, I agree with you. And I, I learned a lot about the Bloom's techno, uh, um, taxonomy. taxonomy that you mentioned. Those are the fundamental to actually gain from our education today. So thank yes. you so much for bringing this up.
You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. So we, uh, before we close, we still recognize that there is a digital divide uh, between those who are able to use these gadgets and those that are unable to use these gadgets. So uh, to continue to be relevant, we must uh, be able to change with the times. We must change with the times. So even so, it, it may so so we may not be talking of complete replacement, but uh, the, the the advancement can actually outgrow many people, and when you are outgrown by the changes, uh, you will find that your your relevance and your uh, probably your income will be greatly affected if you cannot uh, be hired because you lack. IT skills, definitely that is going to affect you and your income. Uh, I see uh, comments in the chat room which are relevant, some of them appreciating the, the conversation. I uh, thank you all very much for that. Um, let me see if there's any question, last minute. Uh, uh, Professor Ijo, can you allow yes, me in please? Yes, please, yes. Thank you, thank you so much, Prof. I did not get most of the presentation because of network challenges on my side, but there is something that I just needed a little uh, a recap on from you as, as you see things. I am not afraid. In fact, I joined, I joined, I joined the, the, the um, company of our dear professor who says that he's very hopeful, and I am too, but I have a little concern. Yes. There was an article that I was reading just recently. Mm -hmm. And this is what the article says. The article says AI is already transforming governance and global politics. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm wondering how far we should go with AI in terms of making decisions for us, the decision making process, particularly as it pertains mm. to violation of basic human rights. If we are allowing AI to make decisions for us as leaders, how far should we go in terms of collaborating with, with AI uh, in making those final decisions for us, which has repercussions on people's rights? What do you think? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Russell, for your question. And it's a very relevant one. Uh, I think, how far should we go in using AI uh, to do things and also to make decisions? Uh, my take is that where, where it, ref it relates to doing routine, boring type of work, I'm all for it. I'm all for AI doing things that are routine, that are boring. Uh, but I think I will agree with you that when it comes to ethical decisions, uh, I, I think those will continue to remain human decisions. At least we, for us not to, 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 to miscarry uh, the law or the ethics um, of, of our life as human beings, we will have to make those decisions ourselves. Uh, what decision? Decisions which involve ethical judgment. And that is also uh, why I outlined the things that, that go beyond uh, what is easily uh, du duplicated by, by machine. Uh, there are certain things, moral judgments, which, which AI is not suitable for, in my view, uh, which require human reflection uh, and, and reference to ethical and moral standards that are human. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's what I can say to that, but it's a very, very pertinent uh, thing to, to, to reflect about. Uh, but thank you for that question. Uh, any other last minute? Yes. I think we, yes, please. I have a contribution on that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Dr. Russell, uh, Russell, I agree with you. But there's always there's always a limitation 
of, of uh, abilities, whether AI, computers, whatever it is, and uh, humans will always be learning from those limitations and be in control of defining those limitations. Those limitations are defined by uh, um, principles that humans hold in highest esteem. When it comes to even the ethical, we still have the final say even in those decisions. So I feel confident that uh, it, there's, it's, not going to, there's, it's not going to be possible for everything to be handed over to the AI system completely. <laughs> <laughs> Even with computers today, initially we thought the same thing with computers to how much, but well, we see the computers will, will still be in control of what they are doing. Like uh, Prof said that those routine, boring activities, yes, they can do it so fast, all right? It becomes exciting. But we as humans, we cannot do those things as fast as. So I believe that the, the, when it comes to decision making, it, is, it still remains in the hands of humans to make them. And again, those machines are programmed. They are programmed, even though they are still learning, they are programmed not to go beyond the limits, their own limits, even though they are learning. That's why they are called AIs. They are still learning from the rudimentary basic um, programming that they have. They are adding more, but uh, whatever they are adding is guided by certain limitations that they are created by and defined for. That's my opinion about this. Yeah, and I think just to crown that with, the, with something I, I, would, I would say it like this. Uh, AI is a product of human beings. So uh, I would agree with the Professor Tuloma that there is no way we can create something that will replace us. Uh, I, I think that one is, is a, I, I think even, um, even God's creation, I don't think anybody has uh, transcended God and become more wiser, more intelligent than the creator. So since AI is the product of human beings, uh, it is very unlikely that it will attain that level of uh, intelligence or capability that is, it transcends human beings. Um, so so we, we should not have uh, an undue fear. However, the change is there. So, so now to, I'll conclude like this. Uh, there may not be a complete takeover of human beings by AI, uh, but there will be change. There will be need for change. That one, we cannot rule it out. And the change has to come. And the change is what the School of Postgraduate Studies uh, is having a very open door policy and open mindedness to learn and grow as we move into the 21st century. Now, um, I think we have exceeded the time. And so uh, I don't know if our host or uh, Madam Sandra is uh, on the call. And I, uh, or I would invite uh, somebody, I think I would invite uh, Professor Tuloma to give a vote of thanks and then we close. I know the discussion is becoming interesting, but it, is, it was meant to be one hour. So uh, I think we have come to the end of the discussion. So uh, let me request uh, Professor Tuloma to give uh, just a, a vote of thanks. Yeah, uh, for um, the, yeah. Yes. The, the Vice Chancellor in absentia, the Deputy Vice Chancellor in absentia, uh, the, the Dean of the 
Faculty of Science and Tech and the HUDs and uh, the eminent scholars attending this seminar. Uh, on behalf of uh, Professor Ijo and the postgraduate uh, college uh, organizing this series, I wish to thank all those who have uh, been behind the preparation of this uh, seminar, uh, this presentation, and especially Professor Ijo, who has uh, presented eloquently his paper and uh, informing us about the future and what we need to do for the future. Thank all the participants, those who have come to listen, and I believe you have gained so much from this presentation. Thank you all, and uh, as you dismiss, wish you the best uh, preparation for the future, knowing that the future holds so much for each one of us. Thank you all, bye-bye. Thank you, and bye-bye. Thank you all.